everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my September book. Everybody loves a good book haul so let's jump straight in and talk about all of the books that I picked up in the month of September. Um, we will as always start off with the library books that I picked up this month which there were too many of. I have I think 10 books here. Um, I only had one for like most of the month and then nine books all came off hold at the same time. So I have a bunch to talk to you guys about. So the first one that I have here is The Cinderella Murder by Mary Higgins Clark and our fair Burke. So I don't know if that means that this was like ghost written. I don't know. Um, so if you recall, I recently read another book by Murray Higgins Clark, which was the first in this series, and I really didn't like it. But I decided to at least read this second book because this is actually the one that is on my um, really old, I can't remember if it's on my Goodreads, the first page of my Goodreads um, want to read or if it's on my physically written out list, but it's one of the ones I need to read for one of my goals. So I'm going to at least read the second one. If it's as bad as the first one, then I won't be continuing on. But I do have this one. This is a crime thriller. I don't know anything about it apart from that. It does follow, I believe, the same television show that the first one did, which is like a true crime television show, which sounds like it would be great, but it's really not. Well, the first one wasn't. Um, next, I have Five Little Pigs by Agatha Christie. This is the um, next book in the Hercule Poirot. If this number on here is correct, it's the 24th book. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly where I think that this book is placed in this series, but that is, it's around that point. Um, so I don't know what this one is about, but it's a Hercule Poirot and I love a good Agatha Christie. Um, next I have volume 12 of Giant Days. Um, looking forward to getting to this because I love this graphic novel series. Next, I have, we've got a cat trying to get up here, but there is no room for her on this table because there's so much stuff on this desk. Honey, oh, be a lady. Come on, turn to you. Good girl, oh my God. I don't know if you guys heard that it was just a really loud noise from outside. I've got cats, I've got books everywhere. It's manic around here. So next I have The Late Show by Michael Connolly. This is the next book that I need to read um, from Michael Connolly, basically reading all his books in publication order. This is in fact, though, don't knock the camera. She's trying to smell the camera. This is the first book in a new series. I believe it follows, yeah, um, Renee Ballard. I don't, oh, Detective Renee Ballard. I'm not sure exactly how she fits into it. And I believe that this one is just following her. I don't think this one directly ties in to the Harry Bosch novels, but I believe that the second one um, is a tie-in with that series. So I'm going to read this one first. So I have that. This is quite a, quite a chunky one. How many pages is this? It's obviously got a, oh, well, a big chunk of it is a preview for the next book, but it itself is, oh, it's only just over 400 pages and it's like really well spaced. So anyway, we've got that. Next I have Love and Other Theories by Alexis Bass. This is another one that I need to read for one of my goals um, this year. I don't know too much about this. I know it's YA contemporary. I believe it's about a group of friends who have like um, vowed not to like give away their hearts because you stay heartbreak free if you don't give away your hearts. But then a new boy turns up at school and that throws everything, you know, out of whack. So I've got that one. I then have... Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. So I've had this on my channel a bunch because I had the audiobook out for ages and kept meaning to pick it up. So I've had it in TBR videos. Um, but I then realized that the audiobook version that my library has is the um, version that's been adapted for YA. And I wanted to read the just normal um, adult version. And so I managed to find the normal adult version um, from my library in physical format. And so that came in this month and I picked it up. I'm sorry, the cat just jumped around and she's left cat hair everywhere and now my hay fever is going absolutely crazy now my nose has gone red which is fantastic um next i have volume one of two uh, who is this by john layman and rob guillory so this is the next graphic novel series that i've decided to give a go i haven't heard anyone talk about this in ages but this used to be really popular on goodreads it's about a detective of some kind who I can't remember what it's called, but he's got some kind of ability that when he eats something, he can tell like where it came from. So like if he ate a piece of chicken, he'd be able to tell 
where the chicken, like what farm it lived on, what the chicken ate and all of these types of things from what I understand. But he uses that to help solve crimes because if he like eats a piece of like a dead body, he can like tell who murdered them or something, stuff like that. It sounds kind of gross, but really interesting at the same time. And so I'm going to give at least the first volume of this a go. Uh, next, I have Strangers by C.L. Taylor. So this is one that I actually have a Net Galley arc of, but it's that situation where for some reason, Net Galley occasionally has arcs that you can't send to your Kindle. Um, and so it's only readable on the Adobe, like as like a, a digital edition from um, like a PDF type of thing. Um, and so I can't read it on my Kindle. And so I kept putting off picking it up because it is already, I got approved for it after it had already been published. And then it got archived on NetGalley, which means I can't now can't open the digital edition. So if I want to post a review of it, I had to get a physical copy. So I've got this out from my library. So this is a thriller. I have enjoyed C.L. Taylor in the past. And this is basically just about three strangers who have all got stuff going on. It says like Ursula thinks she killed the love of her life. Gareth's been receiving strange postcards and Alice is being stalked. And then somehow their um, paths cross. And it's basically about that story. Like I said, I've enjoyed C.L. Taylor in the past. So going to give that one a go. And then the final book that I picked up from the library this week is The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfeld. So this is one of the books that I need to read for my goal this year to, um, for my reread goal. I set specific books that I wanted to reread this year. And this was one of them. Um, this is... When was this originally published? Because this is like kind of comes up on BookTube every now and again. And it was published in 2006 and gets raved about. Like whenever anyone talks about it, they seem to really, really love it. I read this pre-BookTube before I ever even was watching BookTube, knew anything about BookTube. And I didn't like it. I gave it either, I think I gave it two stars on Goodreads. Um, and then once I joined BookTube and I saw like every now and again, this book would come up, people would read it, everybody loves it. And I was like, did I miss something? So I want to give this a go and see what my thoughts are on it now and see whether I enjoy it now um, the way that everyone else seems to or if I don't. Um, so I'm going to reread this one. So I picked it up from the library so that I could do that because I don't own a copy because I didn't purchase a copy of it obviously when I read it the first time because I didn't like it. Um, so those are the library books. Now let's talk about um, ebooks that I picked up this month. So I have two that I purchased and then nine neck alley approvals just too many but so the two that I purchased are the first was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell um this was on sale on um, Kindle for $2.99 I'm sure you guys have all heard about this I've been intrigued really wanted to read it for a while it's a literary fiction um it follows a woman who when she was a I believe a teenager she had a sexual relationship with a teacher of hers but she has always thought of it, even now as an adult, has always thought of it as being a consensual um, relationship and one of the great like formative relationships that really like formed who she is as an adult. And she still, I think, has quite a friendly relationship with this guy. However, it then starts to come out that there are other girls that he has had, young girls who he's had sexual relationships with. And it makes her then start to question this relationship that um, that she had with him and whether it was... A healthy relationship all of that it sounds really really great and I've heard really good reviews of it and then the other one that I purchased was Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver I've been so intrigued by this book since I very first heard about it I marked it as it was in like a marked as true read video like ages ago um and I've had it on my wish list for ages and then I literally almost bought it and then like the next like week I saw it on sale on Kindle um so this is a gothic like historical gothic novel it's about a daughter like a girl who's got a like a really tyrannical father. I believe it's just her and her father. I think she's had like her mother's died um, and her siblings died or something like that. It's just her and her dad. Um, and there's something about like maybe their house is haunted, something to do with haunted house, I think. I'm not really sure. It just sounds really gothic and really interesting. And like I say, it was on sale um, on Kindle. So I got it. Uh, so now let's move on to my net galley approvals. Um, there are nine here, like I said, because I just have a real problem with requesting things from NetGalley. So the first one I have is The Haunting of Beatrix Green by Rachel Hawkins, Ash Parsons, and Vicky Alvear Schreeder. This has a publication date of the 28th of October, and this is a historical horror. And it's about, it's set in Victorian England, and it's about a, um, like, psychic spiritual medium, but she's a fake. Um, 
and there is some scientist guy who is trying to basically out her um, as a fake and so ask her to come and do this seance thing at this house. And then I think, but it goes better than it should have and somehow they wake some kind of vengeful spirit, I believe. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with this book though because when, after I requested it and was approved, I then like looked at it closer on um, Goodreads and noticed that it's actually like book 0.1 and appears to be really short. So I don't know whether this is actually a full novel or if it's a novella that's going to like preface a series that's coming out. I don't know, but I do have it and I'll give it a go. Uh, the next Neck Alley approval I have is No More Secrets by Jennifer Harvey. This one has a publication date of the 21st of October. Um, this one is a thriller and it's about a woman who I think like 20 years prior, her brother went to jail for murdering the boy that she loved. Um, and now it's, like I said, 20 years later and he has just been released from prison. Um, and she is like, he's now like proclaiming his innocence saying that he never did it. And it's about her trying to uncover what happened back then. I love that kind of stuff. So, um, I got that one. Uh, the next one is All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton. This one has a publication date of the 28th of September, which I actually didn't realize that this had Pub was published in September because I don't have it on my I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it now because September's already passed um so I need to somehow squeeze this in because I read um oh my god what was Trent Dalton's book last year I can see it over there but I can only see the corner of it oh my god it's killing me I'll put a picture of Trent Dalton's other book up here quickly here's one from last year that I adored um swallow universe something about swallowing the universe something anyway um and this is his um that was his debut and this is his like second novel all i know about it is that it is set in darwin um during world war ii um and that's all i know um but i loved like i said his previous book and so when i saw this i was like oh i'll just request it and didn't expect to actually get approved and i was like i said so that one actually has already been published so i need to figure out when i'm going to get to that but excited to get to that one and then I have another one that I was really excited to be approved for, which is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This one has a publication date of the 20th of October. Um, this one is another one that I very recently had on a marked as to read video and I requested it and got approved for it on Neck Alley. So this one is a historical horror comedy set at a New England boarding school for girls. A cursed New England boarding school for girls. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. Really excited that I got approved for that. Um, I was also approved for a book called The Good Girls by um, Sonia Falero, which has a publication date of the 9th of February, 2021. This is nonfiction. And it is about um, the case where there were these two girls. I think they were cousins. One was 14 and one was 16. And it's set, set in, like, it was a case that happened in India where they were found hanging from a tree, I believe. They'd been murdered. Um, and I think it just really looks at that case and how it affected the community and about violence against women in this area. Just sounds really, really interesting. Um, and so I want to give that one a go. Um, I then was approved for Fine by Amy Leah Murphy, which has a publication date of the 17th of November. This one is about a girl who, and I'm not sure if this is adult or YA, but it's about a girl who her sister went missing and was like never found and it's six years later and then I believe it's about her um investigating um the case and trying to find what happened to her sister and the thing that intrigued me about it and like I know that you shouldn't buy into these comparisons but it said it was for fans of Courtney Summers and Sarah Dessen now Sarah Dessen was like and is still one of my favorite authors I loved her when I was younger um, and I have really been getting into Courtney Summers recently. So that comparison was just like, oh, well, I need to read this. Um, the next one I was approved for is called She Lies Alone by Laura Wolf. This one has a publication date of the 9th of November. Um, and this one is about a woman who is a teacher at a high school. I believe, I believe it's a high school. And another woman gets employed there as another teacher. And they have this really like quick um, bond. And they have this like all of a sudden really like intense friendship. Um, and she really is like really loyal to her friend and she really forgives her and um not forgives her but um defends her against a lot of like controversial things that happen that she does um that she gets a lot of flack from a lot of people and she's always defending this friend and then one day after some kind of school event 
that friend is found murdered like on the soccer field or something and it's about that um so I really like that it seems like it's going to be I mean it's a mystery it's a thriller love that um it seems like it's maybe going to be dealing with some like friendship themes maybe some toxic friendship themes like how far should we go maybe to um like defend our friends when maybe the things that they're doing aren't great I don't know it just like seems like it's going to be um has some interesting themes in there and so I was interested in that one um, and then the final one that I was approved for is Liar Liar by Laurie Katz. This one has a publication date of the 1st of October and is actually on my TBR for this month. And this is another nonfiction. This is a memoir about a girl who was raped while she was at college. She reports the rape to the college um, and is nothing is done about it. She is in fact then threatened with um, expulsion by the college. And then through some manner, I'm not sure how it happens, but her rapist then bring some kind of charges against her and it's about that story um and so like I said that's on my TBR this month so those are the ebooks uh, so the final category we have normally is my physical books that I have purchased but I did just want to quickly show you guys a couple of the just trying to figure out where to I've got too much stuff in the way show you guys some bookish uh, things that I purchased recently that came in in September so I had had a quite a long period um where I hadn't really been buying books online the way that I normally do mainly due to COVID um the book prices for places that I normally order from had just gone like absolutely skyrocketed things were so expensive and so I just hadn't really been ordering books and so I decided to buy uh, some bookmarks from a couple of different Etsy sellers um now I do collect bookmarks. I mean, that's not really a shocking thing to say on BookTube, uh, but I have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bookmarks. Um, and so I purchased some from Etsy. So the first one I'll show you, I just bought one from this um, particular um, seller. This was a seller um, based in the United States, I believe it is, but they had free shipping to Australia, which is kind of mind boggling. And I couldn't pass up um, this print. Um, and that is this one that's got these, llamas on it I don't know if you can see that is that focusing can I get that to focus um these llamas why are you not focusing on the llamas is it because my face is too close anyway I don't know if you can see that anyway so I got that one um and that's the only one I got from that seller but then I also ordered three from this Australian seller um who had pretty cheap um shipping to me and like the bookmarks themselves were pretty well priced i'm not sure what the international shipping is but i will link this seller down below because her designs and stuff are exquisite uh this is her card that it came with um she's called the book book owl um and so like i said i will leave a link to her etsy store down below but so the one that i first saw which i believe mel sent to me my friend mel um the first one that i saw was the reason i went to her store and decided that i wanted to place an order with her is this one it's a diviners themed bookmark it says naughty john naughty john does his work with his apron on which is a lyric um, from the like song that the serial killer in the first diviners book sings um and um it has like the ouija board kind of theme down here and like skulls and like kind of floral and all of that i just really really like the aesthetic of this and i love the diviner series and so i got that one um i then also so i saw that one first but then i also ordered two others from her so i got this one which is has this sloth on it and says read sleep repeat which I just thought was really 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 cute and then the final one which is probably my favorite um is this one which says my future is all booked so we have kind of a bookish pun but then also the aesthetic of this is just right up my alley how we have this crystal ball and it's kind of like a nighttime sky type of theme um with this like gold lettering I just think this one is so pretty so anyway, those are a couple of bookmarks. I just thought, you know, that they were bookish themed items that I'd purchased. So I thought that I would share them um, with you guys. And like I said, I'll leave a link down below to that Etsy seller in case you're interested. Because um, even if you're not going to buy anything, just go and check out her designs because they are really, really, really beautiful. Okay, so that's the bookish items. Now let's talk about the actual books that I purchased this month I actually did end up placing an online order the first one that I had placed in quite a while um, and I bought three books so the first of those is November 9 by Colleen Hoover so I've mentioned Colleen Hoover quite a bit recently I 
eventually want to read all of Colleen Hoover's published works, um, despite the fact that um, I haven't gotten along with anything I've read from her so far. But I have heard that her earlier stuff is her weakest, and I'm hoping that as I move on with her, um, that I will like her stuff more. I know this one follows a couple who I think meet and then, but they can't be together. And so they end up deciding to meet up on like November 9th every year. And I think we follow the span of like seven years or something like that. I've just made up that number, but a series of years where we just follow them on this one day each year that they meet up. Um, I haven't heard the most positive reviews of this one, but this is one of hers that I didn't own. And so I grabbed that. Um, I then purchased The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. So I have actually read this. I listened to this on audio earlier this year and loved it. This is a women's fiction, literary fiction about a woman. Who, so it's set in the 70s. Um, or I think it's in 1970. And she is, her husband has died in Vietnam and she's pregnant. Um, and she discovers that her, her baby has this um, heart defect, which in this time period of 1970 basically means that the baby will not survive long after birth. Um, and a circumstance arises where she can potentially do some time traveling and travel to a time in the future for her when we would now have the technology for her to have like prenatal um, surgery on the baby and potentially save the baby's life. And we followed that story. Because like I said, I loved this. I gave this 4.5 stars, um, really wanted to own a copy. And I particularly wanted to buy pretty quickly because I really want to give this to my mom to read because I think my mom will love this. So I grabbed that one. And then the final book um, that I purchased is the Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Been wanting to get my hands on this one for a while. I read, have read The Night Circus by Morgan Erin Morgenstern and loved it. Um, and so I've, I'm not sure. I've heard like mixed things about this. Some reviews of it are like incredibly positive. People will love it, and then others are like a bit more so-so. I know this kind of is like a book about books. I don't know too much about it apart from that, but I did grab that one, and I also think it's kind of funny that. Just unexpectedly, the three books, particularly these two, have like a very similar like color theme kind of going on. But anyway, that's not important to the video. So that's it. Those are the books that I purchased, the books I picked up from the library, the ebooks I purchased, the neck alley approvals that I had this month. Um, if you read any of the books that I've talked about, or if you've got any thoughts on any of the ones that I talked about, or if you want to talk about what you guys have been picking up recently, I would love to know. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. Um, but that's all I've got for this video today. Bye guys.